please sit in any comfortable meditative posture with your hands on your knees in dhyan or chin mudra eyes gently closed head neck shoulders back in a straight line become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes awareness of your head neck shoulders back arms legs the whole body bring your awareness to your breath i am breathing in i am breathing out let this be the form of your awareness for some time shift your awareness to your eyebrow center bhru madhya and at the bhru madhya become aware of the image of a brightly burning jyoti the representation of the guru tatva feel the radiance luster showering upon us and maintaining awareness of this experience we shall chant the mantra om three times together followed by shanti mantras taking in a deep breath oh together om sahana vavato sahano bhunakto sahaviryam karavavahai तेजस्वीनावधितमस्तु तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मे ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम हरि ओम तत्सत जेंटली रब यो पाम सगेन टीच अदर प्लेस देम ऑन द क्लोज आईज experience the warmth radiating from the palms to the eyes to the brain to the whole body and then gently move the palms away open your eyes hari om tat sat namo narayan jai ho so namo narayan yes uh so a warm welcome to this uh, zoom meeting uh, today we are going to listen to swami ji about our uh, satyam yoga uh, conclave and also so many other things about satyam uh, uh, yeah, satyabdi yoga yag so uh, let us start without uh, losing much time uh, i request all the participants if possible keep your videos on uh, so that we will know uh, that you are here with us and uh, keep your mics on uh, muted and whenever you want to ask a question you can put a gesture in the reactions or you can put some you know question or your reaction in your uh, chat window i will be closely watching the chat window to uh, ask uh, swami ji your questions uh so swami ji uh, shall we start right away with uh, uh, some information about uh, satyam yoga yag and satyam shatabdi yoga yag and uh, satyam yoga conclave and other uh, important uh, uh, programs that we are going to do in the next year it is a great honor and a privilege 
to be able to finally speak about this an year ago it was it came to me about this activity you see next year in fact now the muhurtam has started and we have the centenary birth centenary of a gigantic personality one of the greatest pioneers in the fields of yoga and spirituality swami satyananda saraswati in 1923 he incarnated on planet earth and this is 100 years shatabdi varsham and it is a great honor to be able to be at such a moment but then the question came is it enough just to enjoy the moment feel happy recollect the great times and the privilege to be have been in his presence is that all didn't feel like that because you see swami ji was an immensely practical person and when swami ji came to rikhia at that time whenever people would ask swami ji swami ji we would like to do something for you what can i do for you swami ji would smile and say देखो भाई हमको तो कुछ नहीं चाहिए मुझे दो रोटी और दो लंगोटी दो चीज चाहिए दोनों मेरे पास में है उससे अधिक मुझे कुछ चाहिए नहीं इवन इन द फ्रीजिंग विंटर वेन टेम्परेचर वुड बी फोर फाइव डिग्रीज सेल्सियस ही वुड बी इन जस्ट अ लंगोटी एंड नथिंग एल्स and that when he was beyond 70 so he is to say that i don't need anything if you want to do something do it for these villagers and uh, in those years when i used to listen to that i used to feel very impressed inspired and wow see he is really you know is thinking of the villagers and then over the years we came to know his vision but much later what actually happened was i realized that swami ji was not telling us to do for swami ji was not telling us to do for the villagers out of social feeling or out of compassion or wanting to help others but at that time when he was in rikhia i'm i'm sure he would be that way earlier also but he you know displayed this aspect of his personality in rikhia he was in a state of atma bhav what is the state of atma bhav the state of atma bhav is that state when you are hurt and i feel the pain we have seen there was this great saint sant gnaneshwar is very famous very well known that he was in the company of the brahmins and there was a buffalo going across whose name also happened to be gnanya and the brahmin over there mocked sant gnaneshwar and told him huh? so you and he are the same and sant gnaneshwar said yes we all are same at that point the owner of the buffalo whipped the buffalo and the welt of the whip came on his back it was not an intellectual thought that we are all one it was an experience and you know that buffalo came 
and it started speaking the vedas it was in this state the highest culmination of the vedantic and vedic philosophies that swami ji was at rikhia and the pain which those villagers felt swami ji felt and reversing the thought through the mouths of the villagers swami ji received the gifts which people brought to him sahasra shirsha purushah sahasra akshas sahasra pa this is the opening verse in purusha sutta yes that is the state where swami ji was in and he showed us the way how to live the life of a sadhak in the journey of a yoga aspirant we have yoga practitioner then it's a yoga aspirant then it's a yoga sadhak and then it goes into a yoga culture one is just introductory the second there is some degree of yearning to go deeper and wanting to know more the third has understood oh there is something more and i am ready to give up many things and focus on this but all these three are individual but that's not sufficient it has to be the entire culture so when it's yoga culture it spreads beyond us this is what is important remember what swami ji had said years ago when he started the yoga movement in mundir he said he declared he prophesized yoga will emerge as a powerful world culture and change the course of world events 60 years ago people i'm sure would have thought oh he's just saying something to impress but today we see yoga has become a world phenomena it's still yet to become a powerful world culture we are on that way and we are also at that crossroads in civilizational time where our decisions can make an impact for long period to come and it is the duty of yoga practitioners yoga aspirants yoga sadhaks to come up rise to the occasion work tirelessly so that this prophecy is fulfilled and blossoms and makes our life amazingly beautiful and the life around us too so to such a great saint and soul what can we give and then first thing which came to my mind was this swami ji said help others that is what swami ji showed us at vikhya so that is what we have to do okay but how can we you know helping others and all that is fine but how can we make it as a dedication to swami ji at that point the couplet in the aarti when we do the aarti to the lord in hindi there is a beautiful couplet tera tujhko arpan kya lage mera i offer it to you what do i offer it to you what you gave to me what you taught me let me practice it let me share it with others and let that be the dedication to you that is the bhav that is the philosophy and that is also the need of the times so it is with this philosophy that satyam sumiran yog research foundation decided to undertake 108 activities in the centenary year each activity dedicated to the teachings of gurudev 
so and inspiring to know swamiji uh, swamiji at this point i just wanted to ask you one uh, important point uh, you said yoga and that will be the world's culture right uh, so how are we uh, you know how can we all practice yoga in the true form it's as you always keep saying in your uh, uh, meetings and uh, in your teachings that yoga is not only the asanas it is much more than that so uh, can you please share some about uh, you know what we can do to make ourselves proficient in that yeah, yeah. That, that's that's very important but before we understand that and before we go into the uh, the skill of living yoga 24/7 we will need to also understand what yoga means and the credit of first speaking of yoga in scientific terms in the research oriented terminology goes to shri swami ji swami satyanand ji it is he who brought out these teachings and gave it a very strong firm scientific foundation and therefore one of the first activities as a part of the satyam shatabdi yoga yag is satyam yoga conclave what is a yag a yag is a series of yajnas and what is a yajna yajna is a multi dimensional activity wherein there is expansion of consciousness at the same time there is benefit of others at the same time there is benefit of the environment so it is a activity which helps multiple people multiple objects multiple dimensions so a series of such yajnas becomes a yag so this is the activity satyam shatabdi yoga yag it is a yog yajna a series of yog yajnas this is what is very important and one of the first activities is a satyam yoga conclave this will be done every month and the idea is swami ji has spoken of yoga in multiple dimensions different aspects of yoga this these aspects of yoga will be discussed will be spoken about and we will try to understand and practice how can we incorporate these principles in our lives in different facets be it health be it social welfare be it spiritual development be it yoga practice there are multiple facets which swami ji has spoken about many traditions which he has started so the satyam yoga conclave it will be once a month two day affair it will be of course online also which will discuss these topics and there is a theme for every month there are other small conversations which we will be having about different aspects of yogic practices yogic lifestyle which will be based on the teachings of gurudev so these are three sets of activities which will be happening we will also be having various yogic practices different aspects therapy wellness spiritual development lifestyles and upskillings these form the first aspect the classical aspect of yoga as generally yoga is known as 
But Swamiji did not stop at this point. As Chitrabhanu asked, how is it that we can impl implement, imbibe, inculcate the principles of living yoga? And for that, there is a set of activities which have been designed. You see, at Rikhya, Swamiji taught us a different form of yoga. It is the form of yoga of the heart. It is the form of the yoga of Swami Shivananda, his guru. Swami Shivananji, he said that yoga as is classically known, this yoga is not able to help people in its completeness because the minds of people are fickle. So what do we do? We have to reach the same end, but this path is too tough for people. So Swami Shivananji carved out or rather showed a different path and he created the same structure, the eightfold path of yoga. And that was serve, love, give, purify, meditate, realize, be good, do good, be kind and be compassionate. It is not yama, niyama, asan, pranayam, pratyahar, dharana, dhyan, samadhi. I mean, yam, niyam, are we even able to do that? Forget about, I mean, we have left yam, niyam and we have just gone to asana because they appear to be very good. But we are not able to practice yam, niyam. Forget pratyahar, dharana, dhyan, samadhi. I mean, they are out of question for the large number of masses. So what do we do? Swami Shivananji brought out this path which will take us to the same goal. But the difficulty which we face is the fickle mind. And to balance the fickle mind, Swami Shivananji said, first serve with unconditional love and learn to give, give, give and give. Don't worry about taking, just keep on giving. And when you give unconditionally, he also gives us. And when that happens, there is a purification within. When purification takes place, meditation happens spontaneously. Dhyana, meditation. And after dhyana, realize. But Swami Shivananji did not stop after realization. Swami Shivananji said, after realization, be good, do good. What do you mean by be good, do good? Be good, do good has something to do with external world. Dhyan, Samadhi has to do with internal world. But after reaching the pinnacle, he says, reach out. Be kind, be compassionate. Let your heart melt like the butter at the plight of other people. That is the eightfold path of Yoga, which Swami Shivananji declared. And that is the need of the times. And that is what we can do. If we want to progress in yoga, we need to have asan siddhi. We should be able to sit in a same asan still for three hours. Can we do it? Anybody? No, Swami so, Three minutes is also difficult. <laughs> so, what do we do? Give up. Leave. Yoga is not for me. I have to stay in misery, pain, sorrow, suffering, right? Isn't that the way? Because if I cannot sit for three minutes, yoga is not for me. But Swami Shivananji said, don't worry. If you can't sit still, we will find another way. And this is the way. And this is also bhakti in action. 
bhakti is defined as bhaja sevayam, not bhaja pujayam. You worship by service. So this is what Swamiji taught. And this is what Shri Swamiji showed us how to do that. So the next ornament to be offered to Swamiji is a wide range of these seva activities. And these seva activities are intended towards the underprivileged, the have-nots. We have four, five activities. First, healthcare. Second, nutrition and fitness. Third, Pratibha Samvardhan. Nutrition and fitness is known as Khel Kud. Arogya Samvardhan, Khel Kud. Pratibha Samvardhan, the talent, the hidden genius needs to be brought out. Shamata Samvardhan, there are people who don't have employable skills or employing skills. We need to support them. Bhuke Pet Bhajana Nahmai Gopala. When the stomach is empty, nothing else works. So first, we need to ensure that. And when we ensure that, then alone we can move ahead. So that is Shamata Samvardhan. Improving and in, increasing the abilities. Then Paryavaran Samvardhan. Yogic eco-farming. And measures for improving ecology. These are activities intended towards the underprivileged. But that was not all what Swamiji taught at Vikhya. <clears throat> Swamiji, to use the terms of corporate governance, modern technology, modern terminology, they say you need to have a win-win situation. So this is exactly what Swamiji did. He combined spiritual practices needed for the spiritual sadhak and the practices needed for uplifting the people. Swamiji said that the 80% of the underprivileged, they are in fact the load bearers of the society. And if they collapse, society will collapse. That can't happen. That shouldn't happen. And if society does not care about them, then it is the duty of sannyasins to do that. And Swamiji was not a person who would just speak. He did it himself. And that is what we have to do. But not as an act of charity. Swamiji said, charity is the mother of poverty. I don't do charity. I offer things to Devi Ma. And then I give it to people in Prasad. Such a big activity. When I give something to someone on a subconscious level, I feel, oh, see so how good I am. I am helping somebody. And I reinforce to that person, I am hopeless. I can't even stand it on my own feet. I need to beg for arms. Brings in inferiority and negativity in the receiver. And brings ego in the giver. But Swamiji turned that around. He said, <clears throat> in the practice of Kanya Puja, you invoke the cosmic mother in this small Devi who is in front of you, the little girl. And then you do her Aradhana. First we do Avahan. And then we do Aradhana. And then we request for Ashirwad. So, in the same manner, let us also do Avahan and the Aradhana. Instead of doing Rupam Samarpayami, Deepam Samarpayami, Navetyam Samarpayami, Akshatam Samarpayami, why don't we do School Booksam Samarpayami, School Dressam Samarpayami, Medicinam Samarpayami, Education Samarpayami, Operation Samarpayami, because 
the dhupam deepam naivedyam which we offer it doesn't go to devi ma it just stays here but that dhupam deepam naivedyam is the medium through which our shraddha goes to devi so why can't we make other things the medium and what is the basis of this in the bhagavad gita bhagwan swayam has said patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhaktya prayachati whatever the devotee offers to me with devotion and dedication i accept so swami ji said let us do practical kanya puja what is this dhupam deepam naivedyam going to do to this little girl instead let me give her nutrition let me give her fitness let me give her medical care let me give her uh, dresses let me give her things by which her life or that person's life is uplifted and when we do it as a form of puja we receive the blessings of the divine and since we are doing it as a form of puja our ego doesn't come up since we are offering it as a prasad that person does not get the inferiority complex rather the person feels uplifted because be it the richest person or the poorest person everybody feels blessed to take the prasadam of the lord this is the prasadam of the lord and this is what swami ji taught and this is what is being done in these various gram samvardhan activities but these gram samvardhan activities they are an opportunity for us spiritual aspirants to do atma samvardhan uplifting our own self in the gita bhagwan has said uddharet atmanatmanam we ourselves can uplift ourselves how this is the way in kali yuga in kali yuga there are two ways of atma shuddhi nama samskar nama sankirtan nama smaranam and parokar seva this is how swami ji taught us and we have seen how effective how uplifting it is to all of us and swami ji brought in another aspect in did not only do it as a form of kanya puja but he gave it as yagna prasad those of you who know a little bit of yagna or have read history would know that our scriptures say no yagna is complete without daan daan is an integral part of yagna agni is not the only aspect satsang and sadhana is not the only aspect but daan is equally integral you do agni you do sadhana and satsang that's fine but it will not be complete till the time you don't do daan it is this which swami ji brought in why did he bring yagna because yagna is a very important practice today we are in the midst of an ecological crisis i don't need to explain to you about it all of you know about it you are seeing this in the midst of winter it starts getting hot in the midst of summer it starts raining everything is going haywire why because there is ecological disruption of course it's a man made catastrophe we in modern science don't know how to reverse it we are using palliative measures reducing carbon footprint doing not this not that not that by which we can try and reduce the damage which has been done but is there a way that we can re- reverse this damage that is possible through yagna because yagna is a process by which 
we invoke the supernatural forces which govern nature and also it is a process by which the five primal elements the pancha mahabhutas are invoked they are nurtured they are nourished they are rejuvenated and the entire creation is as a result of the permutations and combinations of these pancha mahabhutas so when we invoke these pancha mahabhutas and rejuvenate them it works all over yajna is known as ऋतु संतुलन बैलेंसिंग द सीजन भगवदगीता अगेन सेज यज्ञावती पर्जन्य अन्नावती भूता पर्जन्याद अन्न संभव यज्ञावती पर्जन्य दैट इज वॉट इज बी टू बी एबल टू बैलेंस नेचर दैट इज वेर यज्ञ as an ecological practice comes in yajna is not a religious practice 50 years ago we made the same mistake we used to think yoga is a religious practice swami ji showed us it is a practice of science and 25 years ago 30 years ago at rikhia swami ji revived the science of yoga he explained that the science of yoga is an ecological practice and also the practice of expansion of consciousness this is the practice which swami ji brought out and this is the other aspect of satyam shatabdi yog gyan so this is a bouquet of multiple activities what i we have been able to try and learn from the teachings of swami ji of course swami ji has brought out so much but we are limited we can only get so much so whatever we have been able to learn let us try to imbibe that share that make the world a better place due to that do our little bit in the prophecy which he has made and it is taking place it's not due to us that it will happen it will happen with us or without us but if we align ourselves to that then we can be like this gopas of bhagwan krishna when he took the govardhan on his little finger the gopas put up the sticks and said oh the little finger of the lord is my pain let me also do my bit do you think that stick had any value under that mountain it had no value but it had the value of the bhav they could not stand that krishna is doing so much and we are doing nothing they put whatever they could that is what we need to do let us do whatever we can and when we join doing these activities that grace flows through us all of us are always looking for a shortcut how can we get the grace because the moment grace comes to us all my problems will be solved my promotion will take place my transfer will be stopped my court case will be resolved my life threatening problems will be resolved how by the grace of the lord and that's why we are always looking somebody to bless us but swami ji has shown that it is not enough for us to think of the lord and keep on thinking of the lord it is necessary for the lord to think for us how do we do that swami ji said when you do the work of the lord the lord will think for you and what is the work of the lord one of the names of bhagwan is patita pavan who is a patit a person who is downtrodden and he is the one who uplifts the downtrodden so go out find out who are patit and work 
towards becoming becoming a means for their upliftment as a means of my sadhana not as what we had spoken earlier so when we do it in this manner then god sitting wherever he or she is will say are yaar mera to ye kaam karna tha i needed to do this job look he is doing my job no good i don't have to exert myself and then he sees oh he is doing my job and he doesn't have to exert he is always going to ensure that okay he keeps doing his job if there is some problem coming his way he will say ruko wo mera kaam karna hai kaam karne do usko that means he is thinking about me i don't need to think about him he needs to think about me and if i think about myself god will say ये बेटा तो आपके बारे में सोच रहा है ही नोज हाउ टू टेक केयर ऑफ हिमसेल्फ ओके लेट मी सी लेट मी पुट माय एनर्जी एल्सवेयर बट व्हेन वी ट्राई टू लुक फॉर अदर्स ही विल से अरे ही इज वर्किंग फॉर अदर्स ही इज डूइंग माय जॉब लेट मी इंश्योर दैट हिज प्रॉब्लम्स आर टेकन केयर ऑफ द ग्रेस फ्लोस थ्रू अस एंड व्हेन द ग्रेस फ्लोस थ्रू अस वी आर सो दिस इज द ऑफिशियल shortcut to getting grace i may not be deserving of his grace but by the very act of trying to be a medium of the grace for other people that makes me that that qualifies me to receive the grace not for me but that person but when electricity flows through a wire it transforms the wire it creates magnetic elect effect of electric current and heating electro effect of electric current that happens automatically the wire doesn't have to do anything else in the same way when the grace flows through us it transforms us completely every problem is solved so that is the ultimate form of sadhana reaching out to connecting with him and this is the philosophy with which all the activities are undertaken satyam gram samvardhan for the under privileged materially satyam atma samvardhan for us who are under privileged spiritually maybe not materially but spiritually we are under privileged so yoga and reaching out through the gram samvardhan activities allows us to uplift a total of 108 activities that means monthly we have about 8 to 10 or 12 activities taking place be tuned in and uh, we will be sharing with you what are the activities the dates etc this is such a profound thing swami ji to put everything together atma samvardhan one side and gram samvardhan on the other hand and integrating them both and making it possible through this one not uh, 140 odd programs over next year uh, so we are all i think uh, keen to know what uh, we are going to see in the next year and what are the other programs that are going to happen and i am sure the yoga conclave will also be of so much of interest and uh, upl- uh, uplifting experience for all of us because uh, we are going to learn so many aspects of about yoga and uh, before we go into the other section of the blueprint actually you know asking you what are the programs that are there uh, i have one question in the chat window uh, from ashish ji ashish ji if you are here uh, if you could unmute your mic and ask uh, sure uh, namuna and swami ji namuna rain uh, i had a question um, i wanted to understand more about how we can actually get involved or or contribute to the you know the shatabdi yoga activities that are happening apart from the programs that are happening is there any other way also that we can uh, get involved and contribute these programs are for all of us so that we can uplift ourselves gram samvardhan activities are there atma samvardhan activities are there 
so you can contribute your skills your expertise if you are if you know something about medical care come in offer medical service if you don't know about medical care you have been there in the medical camps you know even if you do not know about medical camps you can join in and it makes a difference so that is there if you know about education with samskaras join in or actually you know you don't need that quality of official in, uh, in you the only quality which need is needed qualification is the desire to help and openness to learn and you can join in and if you have suppose you are not able to come personally but you can organize some people to join in is also welcome and you can if you have stuff by which you can contribute it is also welcome so you can you know contribute in multiple ways you can make a donation you can donate your skills best is come in seva you do that and it will be very helpful uplifting to you to the villagers to the underprivileged uh, we all we all personally experienced that uh, the grace that flows through us when you said uh, you know it looked it it looked so real because when we uh, do some program it makes us feel that we are much more energetic than uh, you know what we are uh, other than that other than the seva karyakram as they say you know uh, individual uh, benefits individual uh, energies are something but when you sum them all up it is much bigger than the sum of all the individuals so that's what is what we experienced during some of these karyakrams swamiji um, so uh, maybe we can have a uh, little uh, little more uh, inputs about the blueprint that you want to share with us uh, the programs that we are going to have in the next one year and uh, later we can take few questions yeah you see i have chosen four areas for gram samvardhan and the gram samvardhan will take place with arogya samvardhan medical camps khel kud nutrition and fitness and bringing up children multiple aspects of the child development education sanskar based education not just the three rs reading writing arithmetic that is also important but the education of how to live life because life is not always a bed of roses so when the thorns come our way how do we behave how do we not behave that is something which is important because adversity is going to come in fact we should not be afraid of adversity we want to welcome adversity because adversity can be a stepping stone to success but when adversity hits us we crack and crumble how many of us can remain smiling if we were on the hit list of our own uncle right before birth and right from birth multiple assassins are coming and trying to kill me everything is going wrong for me but i am smiling and i am doing everything for what is correct to be done my personal life is in doldrums but i work towards social good spiritual good i bear insult bear injury adjust adapt accommodate but don't deviate from the goal that is the life of lord krishna and lord krishna is yogeshwar what he taught arjuna in the battle field starting from point of panic depression nervous breakdown till the highest level and he was not a person who had a easy life in fact nothing in his life was easy 
But there was not a moment when he was not smiling. That is because he had the samskara. Look at the life of Sri Ram. He was being crowned. And the same night, he was told, get lost. If it were you or I, either I would commit suicide or go into a rage and start shooting people. We see that happening a lot. He did nothing. He gave a sweet smile. Thy will be done. And walked into the forest. And in 14 years, he converted and uh, uh, converted a dire situation. Highly embarrassing, painful, into an opportunity and became immortal. Don't think of Ram as a king uh, or as the Lord, but as a king, as a smart fellow. And then you understand. So, this is what is essential. And to do this, some skaras have to be given. That is Pratibha Samvarbhi. And this is the second activity. The third activity is Kshamata Samvardhan and the fourth activity is Paryavaran Samvardhan. In these four areas, Pune, Chinchwad, Panvel, Badlapur and Chahapur Shirod. These are the four areas which I have shortlisted. All these four activities are going to take place in these four areas because it's not sufficient to just make a tick mark. We need to work through with a population for a period of time, then we can see a difference in their lives. So these are the different seva activities which SSYRF is offering. There are various in, in conversation activities. There are various Satyam Yoga conclave activities. There is the Mantra Booster. There is the Pancha Maha Bhuta Yadnya Ahavan, which we perform every week for purification. There are different yoga classes. So these are the activities. Depending on our inclination, we can choose, we can contribute, we can participate, we can become a part. And you can also come and move hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder, trying to work and lift this mountain or this opportunity. So these are the various activities. I think they, it comes to about 12 to 15 activities. Let me just confirm. Uh, meanwhile, I, I have a comment in the chat window from Shilpa. I will just read it out for the benefit of those who are on uh, phones and cannot read the chat. Uh, so Shilpa says, uh, I have uh, received uh, uh, grace in multiple forms since I have been part of SSYRF. I have felt the electricity flowing through me and creating the magnetic effect for my family and home. Thank you, Swamiji. And is it possible that Shilpa comes online and uh, shares her experience and or anybody else who would like to share because I when I see this, I see many of us who have already been a part of all of this and how beautiful it has been. So anybody who would like to come up can share because it is not only my activity. I'm just a medium. It is our work. We together have to do it. So if there is something you would like to share, the experiences. You are welcome. So Shilpa is here. I think Dosa is over. Yes, yes, Swamiji. Uh, always a pleasure to talk about, uh, you know, my experience. Is my voice um, audible? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, great, great. So yes, I'm not in my home setting. I am at a family event um, in, um, in one of the small towns of uh, Andhra Pradesh. Uh, but yes, I think, uh, you know, uh, where do I start? It's been, it's been just a magical experience, uh, you know, uh, working with the SSYRF. And of course, it was one step at a time. But I think my first um, experience of grace was the first medical camp that I attended in June. Um, and that energy was so uplifting and so divine and so um, something unknown uh, to me before. Uh, it, it was uh, an addiction. <laughs> it's been an addiction since. 
uh, I just can't get enough of it. And the more, uh, you know, the more efforts you put in and the more energy that flows you through you, it's just, um, you know, and I've seen things that I wanted to resolve for my family and struggles that I've been going through for years and not knowing, finding answers. All of them have appeared on their own. As Swamiji, you say that, you know, if you're doing God's work, God does your work for you each step of the way. Like, why am I able to do so many things for SSYF? Because um, everything else that I need to do is automatically taken care of. Um, you know, so uh, it's never a second doubt, like, okay, how will we take our time? Or what, if, is it my family going to get compromised? Or, oh, you know, but I have this responsibilities and uh, what if, you know, so there are so many doubts and questions before we get onto this path. Uh, but then when we do, uh, we all experience that, you know, things that we wanted to do have automatically taken care of themselves. So uh, I think it's been amazing. And I just want to keep walking as uh, long as, you know, I mean, it takes and as far as it takes. So thank you. Thank you so much, Swamiji, for the opportunity. Very wonderful. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Silpa. Uh, it's truly wonderful. And yeah, I resonate the same feeling. You know, uh, for me, time has been the largest constraint, but I really don't know where time comes from. And when something is really required at SSYRF and automatically it gets done, uh, I automatically tend to get that extra time for uh, doing something like that. Chitra, and of course, Chitraji, just one second. I just want to ask Swamiji one thing. Uh, Swamiji, if you give a chance in Hyderabad uh, on behalf of uh, SSYRF, if you want, we can actually perform Lalita Puja or uh, if actually uh, Lalita Puja, I can do it easily without somebody's help. So that's why if you give a chance, we can actually do it, Swamiji. Yes, that is one nice thing. Lalita Puja, we can do. Uh, and, you know, all these activities, we do mm -hmm. Navachandi Yagya because Swamiji started the Shatachandi Yagya at yeah. Rikhiya Pete. Hmm. And we all have seen how Shatachandi has transformed. Hmm. So, uh, yes, it's a beautiful idea and it's wonderful uh, that you have offered to uh, do Lalita Puja and uh, the Yagya. You see, we do the Yagya yes. and the practical Yagya, both the things. Yes. So, uh, it's wonderful. Thank you really very much. And we will we'll look into how we can uh, yes, Swamiji, we'll collaborate talk. so that the impact, you know, grows and reaches the entire world. It is my hope that on Yoga Purnima 2023, why can we not have 108 havans? They don't have to be huge, big events. They can be small events, but 108 simultaneous havans at different parts of the world, huh. all connecting together with one sankalpa, join in the seva of Gurudev, dedicated to him. Lagu so, Swamiji, I can uh, arrange in my house. Lagu Havan, I can. Yeah, that is it. You see, if you see what Swamiji had done, Swamiji, and, and if you see the Panchamahabhut Havan, which we do every Saturday, yes, hey, it's a very small activity, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and you are done. Yeah. It's not a, you know, big, very big, elaborate. The ritualistic aspect has been reduced and the spiritual aspect is brought up because we have to remember that ultimately, it is antar yag, the inner yajna, which is important. Bahir yag is only a stepping stone to antar yag. And Swamiji has brought in the spiritual aspect, the sadhana aspect, with this bringing up the quality, but reducing the various upacharas. The rituals are brought down to a minimum. Every very simple, which anybody can do. So if we can connect. That would be a beautiful thing. Just imagine 108 places with the same sankalpa at the same time 
Yajna is going on to welcome the grace of Swamiji. So, in this aspect, your offering is most welcome and very well appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, that will be our pleasure if we can do something for Sri Swamiji. Swamiji. We are all like little squirrels, you know. Yes. Putting our small bits of pebbles. Swamiji, you were talking about uh, the uh, benefits we get from your teachings. And um, as we are aging, actually, I will speak from, uh, on, my, on behalf of myself and Hema. Both of us are very, um, we want to learn more about spirituality and all your uh, teachings are really helping us. And uh, we are uh, getting more and more uplifted from the teachings. And this is one of the advantage we see. And then we feel as though we are part of the teachings, though we are doing the uh, online teaching, uh, online, we are participating in online teaching. That is, that is what you need because as you are aging, you need more and more of uh, the um, self-realization and that is what your, your teachings are helping us. Thank you. Beautiful because you have really brought out that aspect, the lifestyles. Swamiji has said, don't just practice yoga, live yoga. And there are four distinct lifestyles. That of a student, that of a householder, that of a vana prasthi, and that of a sannyasi. So we know up to householder enjoy life, which actually is not Grihastashram, but anyway. But we don't know anything about vana prasthi. How do we age? In Sanskrit, there is a way it is called vayovruddha, tapovruddha, jnana vruddha. We become vayovruddha. By age, we age. We become old. But we don't become tapovruddha and jnana vruddha. And so therefore, I call it becoming an elder. Let, bringing that wisdom, bringing that higher energy. That is beautiful. And it is. I can see the difference which is taking place. All the senior citizens, they are becoming elder citizens. And I feel very <laughs> proud to see that happen. It is Indeed, the offering to Swamiji, because Gurudev's Gurudev, Swami Shivananji used to say, an ounce of practice is more than a ton of theory. No point in just speaking about it, but putting into practice and you all are doing it. That is the best dedication. Uplifting ourselves is the best dedication we can give to Swamiji. And I am thankful to you, all of you. Thank you who are taking part in these activities and benefiting because every little bit makes a difference and the life changes. It is better, you know, Swami Niranjananji used to say, it is better to light one little candle than to grow up in the dark. Don't say, oh, I'm just a little candle, what can I do? It's better to light one little candle that one little candle will remove darkness in one area and jyot se jyot chalate chalo. One candle lights another and another and another and another and before we know, the darkness is gone and the light is here. That is so beautiful. That is the dedication we can give to Swamiji. And I am really very touched and thankful to all of you who are selflessly, open-heartedly, wholeheartedly joining with us. You all are part of SSYRF. Satyam Sumiran, Yoga Research Foundation. Satyam means the truth. Satyam means the eternal existence. Satyam also means Swami Satyananda. Sumiran, constant remembrance. Yoga Research Foundation. This is something which is for everybody. And I am thankful to all of you that as we make this beginning, there are so many of us who are working together tirelessly 
thinking 24/7 how we can do better how we can do more it humbles me it touches me that in fact that is the grace in action how all of you from different corners of the world are coming together and weaving the magic of gurudev beautiful very very happy and i believe when we come together we can make it it's not easy it's very difficult but ek akela tak jayega milkar bhajan uthana sathi hath badhana sathi one person alone will falter but when we all come together then there is no mission impossible everything is mission possible and my heartfelt gratitude thanks to all of you who are here and there are many who are not here but who are silently working tirelessly let us come together and make this year so magical that our entire life is uplifted in this and we receive the grace in abundance and if you want to join in you know where to get in touch with how to get in touch with i mean all of you are family there's nobody who is new we are all family and let us do it together so on this occasion can we take this as the sankalpa that together we shall make that effort to bring this sankalpa to fruition i don't hear any anybody if i will need you to can, hear something you can put your reactions if you don't want to unmute use zoom features in its fullest form कोई कुछ बोल नहीं रहा है क्या बात है भाई yeah we will try to not we will try we will join your sankalpa promise hum honge kaam hai aap ek din oh ho namo narayan swami ji hai vishwas yes vidya ji namo narayan swami ji my my also we are thinking of joining the seva karya in the later half of the 2023 beautiful beautiful swagatam swagatam why only in the later half why not in the first half because we are in the seattle now so who said that you cannot uh, contribute from seattle oh, we can contribute from here then it is good we are already yes. there on there, 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 there is a will there is a way yes swami ji i am also there with you yes. <laughs> whatever is possible from here we are in it together yes sir. is really wonderful thank you very much we can go on and on there is no uh, you know dirt but now the journey for which we were preparing you know see the beauty see the grace in 2021 we did 10 events in 2022 we did more than 60 events and now we are trying and aiming to do more than 110 event 108 events in 2023 and i am sure with the grace of guru grace of the lord devi ma and with all the support from all of you it is going to be possible because it is finally you who is going to be coming a part from this end or that end uplifting yourself or joining it for uplifting others because we all are a part of that divine and we need to uplift ourselves and spread it around so if you are in usa you know just today when we were doing this uh, pratibha samvardhan we were discussing how we can use internet as a method to teach so the girls are in badlapur or anand nagar or uh, panvel or different places but the teachers can be all over the world and we can have a curriculum i mean uh, there are people who are already uh, on and they have started chalking the curriculum one of them is right here she is the host today chitra bhanu 
she has been working she came all the way from hyderabad to badlapur and she dazzled she was a you know rock star performer in the khel kood at badlapur nobody wanted to go to games nobody wanted to do anything else they just flocked to her table where she was doing experiments she was dazzling and they were simple experiments but the way she was doing it oh my god it was beautiful and she shared her knowledge with uh, jyoti with uh, ritu and with abhilasha and in pune they did that and beautiful so you know these people they are already working over time to make it happen so with this let us conclude and i will very shortly share the detailed activity list and whoever would like to join in in whichever activity don't wait just come forward send me an email you know where to get in touch with me send me an email discuss and we can make it happen we will make it happen. with this let us conclude today's short not so short actually session with a small shanti part and a sankalpa close your eyes gently bring to your mind the image of guru and take the sankalpa of being medium of divine grace uplifting ourselves uplifting all those who are around us and uplifting the entire humanity because that is the sankalpa of satyam shatabdi yoga yag of pranam to guru the guru parampara and with their blessings let us chant the mantra om and shanti taking in a deep breath oh oh Oh. Asatoma sadgamaya tamasoma jyotirgamaya mrityorma mrutam gamaya स्वस्ति भवतु भवतु पूर्ण भवतु मंगल लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्तु ओम त्र्यंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाकमी बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओ शाति 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 एंड सिंह प्रणाम मुद्रमेवता पिता बंधुश्च सखा हरि ओ हरि ओम तत्सत gently rub your palms against each other clear the number of lotus
experience the warmth and energy radiating from the palms to your eyes, to the brain, to the whole body. And then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Hariyom, Tatsat, Namo Narayana.